All right. Um, good evening. I'll start with the good evening because it's almost uh, it's probably already evening in India. And then uh, good day and good morning to all those that are joining us uh, from uh, around the world. Uh, today, we have the pleasure to regroup uh, with uh, many of our friends here who have been working with us uh, for quite some time and uh, couldn't have a better kickoff to the second day of the Cyber Future Summit um, than having our uh, friends uh, who are so engaged in the Indian cybersecurity community uh, together. Uh, we had a really great day yesterday um, and walked through about a 10 hours of programming, in fact, starting from early morning. And we saw a very interesting aspect and a panorama of cyber issues and challenges and those potentials that many of our friends in the community are working towards. Uh, we spoke about our last year's um, work and initiatives to kick off. Then we went out and talked about the, the great uh, program that we got plugged into and uh, the Department of Labor's um, cyber apprenticeship program that we won with uh, Safal Partners. Then we spoke about the small business forum that we have been so uh, you know so intensely working towards um, to ensure that small and medium businesses size businesses get the same amount of due care and attention from the industry as the governments of, uh, and the large governments and the defense and the larger organizations get and then now starting consumers so fascinating discussion for two hours uh, with uh, a variety of stakeholders well, in fact, that was uh, pretty much driven by our initiatives. The second part of those programs yesterday uh, brought us a, uh, you know, a lens into how different countries and nations are sorting out and start and solving the cyber issues uh, as, as um, you know, as they face and globally they collaborate. We went to Israel and uh, and had a very intense program. In fact, with uh, power packed uh, uh, presentations uh, from. INCD from um, the, from the different industries and startup coaches, and um, that was a good learning. Then we went on to uh, see what I, what is happening in UK, and uh, there we learned about the cyber ecosystem and uh, the innovation and and cyber capacity building programs that is being done in, in a multi stakeholder way. And then we closed the day with uh, a lens into Australia, and that was fascinating too. I mean, it was great to see how risk management has driven overall cyber uh, security for uh, for Australian and the APAC region. And our friend Peter Deans did a great job in assembling that team together. So a great close of day yesterday. Um, so today I am uh, really blessed to welcome um, a, a great um, a panel of leaders uh, who are very close to what's happening in India and also driven some of the changes that have and they made a high impact here. Um, I, will, uh, I, will, I will start with uh, Dr. Sanjay Behal, um, uh, the Director General of CERT in as an illustrious uh, uh, career uh, in, in the industry and now supporting the government and services around uh, the CERT in. Uh, as, uh, joined by Dr. Durga Prashad Dubey, and the Chief Information Security Officer of uh, Reliance Industries Limited and has been a great supporter. We know each other for a little bit now, but that feels like a long time. Um, and uh, supported by uh, Burgess Cooper, um, uh, the leader of uh, cybersecurity um, in EY India, a, a great colleague from my day job at EY. And I can't wait for us to work together. So welcome, Burgess. And, uh, and uh, finally, by Nagraj Kumar Devi. Uh, Nag has been a great supporter of CFF's work both in the US and India and globally. And uh, we have been cracking the nut of cyber capacity building and building programs together. Uh, so welcome, Nag. Gentlemen, we've got a great day ahead and uh, and a great way to start uh, this would be, uh, uh, you know, how are you looking at protecting and, uh, and providing opportunities for the billion uh, population in India? And... Uh, India, in the in the context of what we do uh, from a Cyber Future Foundations, we had a little bit late entry, I would admit, to India. Uh, and maybe because we had to prepare ourselves for facing the scale of the challenges and the and the corporate opportunities, as well as opportunity, giving opportunities for, for the millions there, right? But uh, interestingly, 
uh, we get engaged with the right people. In fact, um, our friend Pawan, who unfortunately couldn't join us today, has been spearing a lot of the work that we've been doing. In August, on August 6th, we had our first executive roundtable in India. Uh, uh, you know, the panelists here were able to join and uh, articulate what is the vision of uh, the cyber capacity building innovation and ecosystem in India. That is something that we worked on very intensely in the last uh, the last couple of uh, months. In fact, in the last two months, uh, Durgaji and I probably had more calls than I had at anybody else. But we have been exchanging emails and uh, and calls. Now we want to make sure that we take a pit stop here in the summit and articulate and get a, a fresh perspective from Dr. Bahal and and go forward to the next year as we build and the the Cyber Future Institute and the Cyber Future Foundations. Uh, multi-stakeholder community and engage with the leadership there. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Sanjay Bal to have some opening remarks and uh, and we'll go from there. Dr. Bal, the stage is yours. Thank you and uh, good day to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure being on this panel and uh, thank you for inviting me on this. Uh, <clears throat> we are seeing the cyberspace is expanding at a very rapid pace and it is increasingly being uh, recognized that technological literacy will be a prerequisite to compete and thrive in this wide economy. And as we go forward, this cyberspace is expected to be more complex in the foreseeable future with many fold increase in networks and devices which are going to be connected to it. And it will thereby making the information and cyber security literacy a necessity. It is also vulnerable to a wide variety of incidents which we are seeing all around us, intentional or accidental, man-made or natural, and the data exchange in the cyberspace can be exploited by nefarious or for nefarious purposes by both uh, the nation states and non-state uh, actors. So there, uh, therefore, today there is a cyber security skill gap across industries. Secure cyberspace will be realized by three dimensions of information security, which we all know is PPT or people, process, and technology. Though I was told there are no PPTs allowed on this uh, platform. So I just thought at least I can use the word PPT, if not <laughs> putting this PPT there. While various uh, initiatives are being taken towards the technology side and setting up of policy or processes, uh, it is seen that across industry, the security skill gaps. The pipeline of skilled people or the availability of highly trained and specialized cyber defenders is continuing to widen. And on the other side, governments across the globe are grappling with the issue of unemployment or loss of employment. And it is estimated that the G20 economies have lost two and a half million jobs to a wide range of nefarious cyber activities, including counterfeiting, piracy, cyber crime, etc. So it is clear that amongst the three pillars of PPT, sourcing of human resources is the only aspect that can help the nation to secure cyberspace in the long run. Because research indicates that there is a 21% higher return on investment by investing in people. The issue with respect to training people in cyber security or creating these cyber defenders is that typically in the classroom and uh, Certification does not prepare individuals uh, for a hands-on operational role. That's what we've seen. And it provides them with a good level of supporting knowledge and some of the skills, but not necessarily ready for hands-on roles. Also, I think we need to note that these trainings are as individuals, all these certifications are as individuals and not as teams. And you cannot secure cyberspace individually because you will need to defend it as a team, whether domestically or internationally. And that is why the role of the private and public partnership becomes very, very critical. And if we don't work as a team, sorry to say, but then we are not going to be defending cyberspace. We will be defending, trying to defend our own space as individuals, and we may still fail in doing that. I, I have a variety of other things that I want to speak about, but uh, well, I think I'll stop here because we need more interaction and I, I was given to understand you have a, a, a volley of questions coming all our way. 
so we are all trying no, to course. secure ourselves and keeping our fingers crossed <laughs> now i i'm i'm learning and that's the spontaneity of learning and then sharing right so uh, rather than volley of questions it will be asking for your uh, you know kind opinion so thank you dr bal that was a good way to kick us off and i think uh, as you suggested um cyber security is a team sport and we have to find our teams and keep them together train them coach them and make sure they are uh, they are they are ready for this fight it is it is not easy and and another thing that i also share with my friends when we talk about it and uh, and i i've not been shy about it cyber security is not also it's not also a spectator sport everybody is involved uh, i mean everyone is involved if you have one of these phones in your hand or uh, I, i don't think who doesn't most of the days but uh, that that's completely changed the equation right so so thank you for kicking us off uh, let me let me start with uh, 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 durga ji here uh, you know we have we have spoken uh, uh, we have spoken about the need for cyber talent we have spoken about different areas that we can commit to and commun- and kind of uh, uh, collaborate on uh, dr dubey what is what is your uh, thought on the the current state to recap on what we have been discussing so so that we can take that forward uh, in in terms of comp you know problems and solutions yeah uh, thanks uh, uh, bal uh, the last 6 7 months has been uh, really unprecedented totally from both from the uh, what's happening in the real world and also what's happening in consequence in the cyber world more so for the organization where i am working we actually are in the business of uh, managing this pandemic also because we run a uh, couple of hospitals and also we have in life science which do a lot of life science organization we do a lot of testing so for the first time we we, we have realized that uh, if uh, anything happens to it uh, and god forbid if it is because of cyber so the kind of repercussion which it will have it is it is it is very very different from what it would have happened 6 7 months before which means that if the it is not available then people will not have a reach to the health system so this is something which is very very different from what was happening earlier and the kind of threats uh, which was happening kind of uh, attacks which were facing almost everybody was facing uh, see so the people try to take advantage of the situations and uh, do lot of innovative phishing and when people fall prey to this phishing then not only they suffer they become a conduit to, uh, to the organizations also so i just wanted to give say this as a prelude to uh, what would happen to people like us who are responsible for managing the cyber security posture so for us as uh, dr sanjay has told about uh, the skill constraint this has been a serious problem all through there is a supply side problem in the cyber security we don't find people i personally if i see a young person and i find that he is a cyber security person i immediately try to hire that person because everybody faces that kind of thing and they are the real asset today to the organizations so we have been getting into a vicious circle like if there is a supply side constraint the option for is for us is to reskill people upskill people and uh, do innovations now i will tell both the things what are the constraints if you do upskilling then the kind of work which has happened because there are a lot of threats a lot of vulnerabilities which has come for different regions and at the same time we have less people so the people are really busy for doing so much of operational work have very less time to really spend time in honing up their skill doing some courses so they they really don't find for us in the last 7 months there was no saturday no sunday nothing else we are kind of enjoying that's not a problem but the fact that we don't have people do not have time to really skill themselves so you cannot skill people because of this kind of a problem so and there is a skill constraint you cannot hire from people the minimum uh, hiring time is becoming sometimes more than a year for hiring the right kind of skill 
Now the only thing remaining is the innovation. Doing innovation inside is actually the real solution which we have I have understood. So that helps in two ways. One is like it uh, it helps in uh, doing a lot of automations, lot lot of orchestrations. So in a way, kind of reduce the uh, operational work. So help people to really spend time in skilling and all sort of thing can happen. And another thing which happens is, since there are supply side constraint, there is always a uh, attrition risk. While there is an attrition risk, the only way you can make people happy and make people really stay invested with you is giving them work which is really cool, really, really interesting. So if you do innovations, these people get really interested. Even if they reduce their salary by 30%, they would still stay put because they are enjoying the work. I, I have really, really understood it of a couple of my people when they could not get what they wanted, they, they said me that, uh, sir, we will not leave even if you get an offer because the kind of work I am, I am being bought by the work. So this is the kind of thing which is which innovation is the key which should happen. And while doing innovation inside the organization is not enough. Innovation has to happen in the industry. When it happens in the industry, government is is, is the is the most uh, important and very supportive. Indian government has been doing a lot of job. The only thing which I always felt personally that why not a single I I might have I don't know if Sanjay can vouch for it and but this also can do that. I might have seen the first uh, cyber security startup in the India. I don't want to name them. A couple of people who started. They're the first cyber security startup. The, the, the word security they started. But what happened to that? Why can't nobody till that reach a billion dollar company? No cyber security startup in India has reached even, even 500 million today. The reason for that, I don't know what's the reason for that. One thing which comes to me is that they they had very excellent solutions, excellent people. No doubt about the people in India. They are definitely good, definitely hardworking. They do very good job. Maybe they were not knowing how to sell the ice cream to the Eskimos. That is where that is where they, they felt. And uh, there are people who capture the market. And uh, I still remember I am associated with a startup from the day one. The kind of thing which we are talking those days. People have taken those ideas. Ideas are nobody's monopolies. I don't know. I don't want to quote who said this, but ideas are nobody's monopolies. Uh, so we had an idea. We could not implement it, but these people took that idea. They made it a billion dollar company. Multi we only became happy that I, I, we might not have earned money, but we became happy that our idea got validated. So this is what things are happening. So what is required for is like the great partnership and also a, 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 a complete uh, marketing strategy where government should play a real role in helping the startup to, to really market their uh, product, not only in India, in outside also. Uh, pursue the quality of Indian products are much, much good. I, I won't compare that, but they're definitely good. So that is what is required uh, uh, to, to make sure that innovation in India is it be, becomes global. Right. Yeah. So no, I think that that's uh, that's a very key point. I mean, you may have a story, you may have an idea, you may have even built something, but if you don't tell your story, the yeah. world doesn't know. And uh, and and I think that's the gap we have. Is is it's definitely tomorrow. It's it, there is a there is a special discussion about that. You know how to how communication works as a key. It's not about cybersecurity knowledge. It's about what you, how do you communicate and what you communicate that convinces someone that you have a solution or a product. Uh, and and in fact, another thing that I will say, I'll say maybe you know we we take as a learning from this summit is we had we had some really successful startups pitch. Like how do they pitch? To, and and that probably is another learning things that we couldn't take right so uh, so great points uh, uh, dr dubey i think it 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 is time to recognize 
the the gaps that we have i think uh, we have uh, probably motivated a, a, a young generation of entrepreneurs but we want to give some uh, glimmers of hope and success so that they can get motivated by the success of others right and that's how the you know the israel has been such startup nation silicon valley has grown and all so fantastic uh, i think uh, we have a problem to solve and we recognize what it is now at least one component of that is so thank you dr dubey uh, but just sort of uh, move on to you i think you know you have has seen the whole breadth uh, of of industry and, and now in the professional services world um you are able to take that to a wider scale right uh, and uh, you have also seen cross sectors right so this problem has been uh, kind of growing in this space uh, and i i would refer to the discussion probably you had with uk yesterday our our friend um, um robert coles walked his walked through his career journey which was literally the cyber security journey for any professional who would been spend like 20 to 20 plus years in this industry and it was how cyber security was back then when he was supporting as a as a junior analyst and then uh, you know he's been the ceo probably at three organizations large organizations and then now he's serving on the boards and professional services and i think that career journey itself articulates um the experiences that we have gathered that we can share back uh, i would i would urge you shed light on two things one is of course you know kind of uh, and a perspective of what uh, dr dubey just mentioned about the the cyber capacity and the talent and innovation growth but also in terms of the opportunities probably we have during the pandemic to to make something happen right change our course of action that will change the course of our action so thanks well uh, one of the things they teach you when you do uh, media training school is pick up something the earlier speaker has said and i'll just pick up what uh, dr sanjay said and dr dubey said and you knew alluded to that is that cyber is a team sport but one of my bosses said that two team sports one is soccer one is american football they both are towards catching a ball but in soccer the whole idea is keeping the ball to yourself and having glory and doing a finishing touch while american football if you keep the ball to yourself you get clobbered it's more you pass around the more you give back the more you succeed and i think cyber security is more like the latter it's more like american football the more you give back the more you give to other people the more like and i've seen durga ji do that and other cso's uh, the more you mentor uh, people, the more it come back to you so on the same lines uh, and i'll come back to your your question how are we doing uh, capacity growing i'll talk a very unique thing we've started uh, ey us and canada uh, one of our partners there uh, has clearly started something called cyber security and digital for neuro center so people who are much more on the autistic centers why we should a cyber security guy always be looking at a guy who's tech brilliant and 99% degrees and certifications we have people who are neurocentric you know challenges but who be very good in some things so we are actually you know putting up a whole uh, program it's called a neurocentry center of excellence uh, where my partner hirain and you know uh, jamal and all those people in the us are now helping us set that in india india has so many people who are who are not even aware that you, they are, could be on the spectrum of autism you know they could be just banished saying you're not smart enough so actually you know we are connecting with ngos finding out people who are neuro specialist grooming them into roles of cyber you know they may not be good in comms but they could be very good in some cyber security features or tech or ai or digital one guy does nlp programming he's made a autism app for other so actually going out breaking the stereotype that a cyber professional guy has to be you know a certification guy a grader you know engineer mba it doesn't have to be it could just be a very very uh, simple person who's very very specialist in some area so we are actually building capacity by doing something very small unique but making a simple and a very important effective uh, in somebody else's life so why will go on i'll say other things but building capacity doesn't mean going and recruiting and masses and if you cross the line you get hired but helping difference in someone's life who probably will never ever get a opportunity in a normal interview but why not have a, pro a program for for such people and helping them you know they have good talent they are really good in terms of longevity they are loyal they are technical as durga ji mentioned they stick to it why do we just not expand the entire universe to include those that's our little contribution which we are doing 
Beautifully uh, said. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a wonderful way to give something back to the society, and uh, that's the great stuff. And this is something which uh, I've been trying to uh, talk about for the last uh, four or five years, but I didn't have much take. Yeah, uh, worldwide, do this. I'm ten in India now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I I would uh, recommend that if you would like to tie up with some schools uh, at this point in time. Uh, uh, at least I know about Delhi, where you have students in the 11th and 12th standard, which is in uh, Mumbai, will be your first and uh, second year college, right? So 11th, 12th standard students, uh, because every school now here, uh, or at least some schools here, have uh, a section for special needs. And there are teachers who are teaching students with special needs because they've gone through this counseling program. And they are absolutely brilliant on certain aspects, as you rightly mentioned, because I know about that because my uh, daughter is a teacher for students who are special needs students. And I am listening to the story that she comes and tells. And uh, that is exactly where you hit the uh, nail on the head. I think that's uh, wonderful stuff and uh, it will go a long way, at least in this cyber security. In my previous company, I took a two month sabbatical from Vodafone. They encouraged that. And I was spending time with autistic kids. <clears throat> and one thing you learn is every child can be taught. Yes. yes the manner of teaching a child is different. Exactly. So, a thing for a, you know, a picking up and putting there could be easy for us, but for a spectrum child, may not be so easy. But a subway surfer or cut the rope game can cause the same level of learning. Just have to find the tools and the techniques to teach the child. And that you know, improves us much more as a person. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is also a tremendous opportunity for collaboration. So, the, and and you you may know this, uh, Burgess at, at EY, even Americas, uh, our CEO, Kelly Greer, she went on stage and brought all the kids up. We, in fact, have a neurodiversity center for cybersecurity in Dallas that that uh, that i am very closely associated with so I, I think there is a we are doing this let's do it together that that is that is what i think you know some are uh, some have tried in a certain way some have tried in some other ways uh, and uh, this is such a top you know such a very uh, sentimental topic when especially you know i feel the way that i, I feel about it is that uh, as sanjay sir mentioned that this is a great way to give back to the community and also help businesses and change careers of people. So great point. I mean, this goes in the in a, in a top bullet point on my list. This is something where just I'm going to work with you and, and others and, and Dr. Bell, let's see how we can get the government engaged, because I think in the in the in US, what we have done and uh, what, what we have recently done is we we have won a program and a Department of Labor contract to create apprenticeship program. And we're in partnership with one of our good friends, um, Safal Partners, Mukta actually was on stage yesterday and she spoke about uh, our, our plan together. And I think that is where we are seeing the government. Uh, earlier it was government intervention. Now it is government support. So they're giving us the funding and the platform and they're asking us to go to the industry and make it happen. So I think that is a great way for public partner, for private partnership. And we can raise the profile of the nation and its cyber mm -hmm. culture. Right. So let me, uh, uh, Dr. Bahal, any other comments? Uh, uh, since you mentioned uh, how we can uh, probably look at some uh, opportunities to, together, uh, definitely because, uh, you know, in the midst of electronics IT, uh, for the last uh, couple of months or uh, maybe more than that, we've been carrying out various hackathons as well as uh, various uh, grand challenges and uh, uh, competitions. So we, you know, we should try and possibly look at a competition as uh, was just mentioned and you mentioned, uh, specifically for these autistic children, and that would be a great uh, uh, way of boosting uh, these people at a national level and also making changes in the lives of uh, you know normal citizens to understand and appreciate that these people can excel in specific areas and will bring about a behavioral change which is necessary excellent excellent i think that that's a great way to shed light to bring promote and uh, bring it to national focus so great uh, recommendation well taken and we will go execute on that that will be our milestone 
so with that, let's move on to uh, uh, Nag. Um, uh, you know, and 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 I, I think I've got uh, we've got a lot of bullet points already to actually start aiming at, right? So, what what is your take on how can we do uh, this across the two nations, right? You know, especially if you look at a global community say like CFF and also the work that you do in the US and and getting and especially in the risk management area, right? Um, I would I would probably give lean more on your public private partnership angle and how can we apply to this profession, right? So now um, your thoughts, please. Thank you, everyone. Thanks um, listening to the great panel here. Um, see, the COVID definitely accelerated the importance of the innovation and the cyber um, initiatives. I believe both in the U.S. as well in India. Uh, coming with uh, the education background where the parents ran the education department for over 40 years, <clears throat> half my life was in India and half my life is in the U.S., uh, known closely about how the education system runs back in India as the policymakers. Uh, in my view, as part of the last nine months, what we're observing, every kid uh, it doesn't need to be a college going kid uh, in the engineering schools today where India almost have 1.5 million engineers, graduate engineers coming out of the schools. Uh, if you look back from in the last nine months, I'm talking about the COVID, every kid, whether he is a, a K-5 or K-12 from the, in the US, what we talk about, or back in India, a third grade or the second grade or even up to 12th grade, Everyone is working from home. That means everybody is actually learning from the home schools. So everybody has access to the internet, the Wi-Fi, uh, and and the computers or the or the mobile devices. So they're learning through those systems. Uh, in my view, in the entire education system in India, your security starts or the learning starts only after twelfth grade. That's mean engineering school, whether it's a you know, medical or some other school programs. Uh, none of the school programs actually teach security aspect in India. Even today, in my, in, I mean, I left India 25 years back, but I'm closely associated with the education department back in India even today. I think from the education capacity building point of what valid everybody is uh, sharing the message here, I think there's a greater opportunity to, 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 to re proactively build a cyber uh, just a security aspect, not just a cyber, but how you protect the nation from um, sometime in April, August when you, uh, the, Mike Pompeo, the defense secretary, mentioned about the clean uh, network, the 5G path, how we build uh, the relationship between the U.S. and India. Uh, the cyber Siksha, I believe, uh, one of the, the global, uh, the Microsoft uh, just I read in the morning before our call, talked about the education, uh, building the ecosystem. Uh, so the public and private partnerships, uh, in my view, is very important. I'm sure the Reliance uh, Geo, which is coming up with the 5G, uh, will be the forefront of the, you know, the change in the dynamics about the Indian education system. Uh, in my view, that's what you need to start building the ecosystem at, at the at the student level who are in the five year or six years who have access to those cell phones, uh, learning about how to, you know, watching those Disney channels or or, uh, or the cartoon movies, the Indian characters. Uh, I think once you start teaching about what the security aspect to, to those kids, I think that's how you build the capacity and also um, shaping the future, protecting the nation uh, rather than talk to those kids at the age of 18, whether they go to the engineering or medicine or some other programs, um, I think in my view, it's very important. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nag. I think that's uh, that, that's it's, it's essentially important. I think that's where the national collaborations come in play, right? How we uh, build this, our, our, our goal from the very beginning had been to build this global talent registry because uh, you know, you need a trusted talent pool for cybersecurity, especially you need, you just can't, cybersecurity is, is a team sport, of course. It is not a spectator for a sport also, but it is definitely a trust-oriented uh, business, right? Where where we need to trust, there are some 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 very deep fundamental ethics and uh, nuances that professionals in this industry have to follow, right? We are securing 
people as people's lives as much as we are securing the infrastructure so with that i think there is a necessity and essential um, uh, requirement that we have with this trusted talent pool and, and i'm glad that burgess you mentioned about the canada angle as well you know that's you you'll see uh, you know later in the in the day i was here but pretty late in your night we have two hours of can programs with canada i think that this whole uh, collaboration across countries is, is absolutely essential as as not mentioned uh, with that uh, let me let me pivot a little bit on on the work that uh, uh, that will probably take us to this part. Uh, I mean, if you were to give in the next, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes we got, let's talk about what can we do immediately. I think one, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably lean on this example that Dr. Bell Bali mentioned about the competition for special needs uh, students and young people uh, who are on the autistic space. I mean, that's a clear goal. You can actually make it happen, right? We can all work together. Um, so, so some of the things that are top of your mind that you want uh, to get done. And I think that is kind of the high you know, milestones that we have to uh, aim for in the, in the shorter and longer term. And then as a team, we can you know, take the time to line up those milestones, what falls where, right? So Dr. Bal, I'll probably start with you. Your thoughts on some of the quick wins we may have that we can go and execute. No, uh, let me uh, take this as another example. So we... Uh, uh, from uh, the CERT inside or Indian Computer Emergency Response side, we carry out uh, various cybersecurity drills and exercises at different levels. Okay, but what we saw is the format in which these drills and exercises are conducted. It's not just in India, but across the globe. Uh, there is, uh, it lacks a formal application of suitable methods and principles. Uh, with regards to design and execution of these trainings and exercises. Mm -hmm. And that is why there's this missing clear learning objectives as well as the learner assessments. So we were trying to look at what should be done and uh, from an innovation and improvement perspective, etc. And we wanted to look at applying formal learning models and pedagogical principles and uh, we took the help of the Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, and this uh, helps you look at assessing the needs of specific target participants. Now here it could be the autistic participants, okay? Or it could be experts. So depending on the uh, segment, you can uh, look at the assess assessing the needs. Then designing the training contents and exercise based on the cognitive requirements of these participants. The th third is assessing their accomplishments and then measuring the effectiveness of your program and its content. So the Bloom's taxonomy has six steps basically. One is remembering, second is understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and then creating. So if I just map it to things of uh, uh, cybersecurity side, remembering will be what basic definitions related to, let's say, incident handling. Can they remember, right? Understanding. Are they able to explain the concepts related to incident handling? Applying would mean application of the knowledge which has been imparted in responding to incidents. Analyzing would be, can they analyze the artifacts and incidents? Then the evaluation would be, you looked at the evaluation of existing incident response procedures, do they need to undergo any changes? And the creation would be basically, uh, how to bring about innovation? How do you improve this plan? How can you improve your incident response? So something of this sort is to be looked at. And this is, this is what we uh, you know, embarked upon over a period of eight months with over 40 different organizations to see how this can be improved and uh, effectively used. And we tested it on people who had almost very, very minimal idea of there is something called cyber security to those who were already doing this exercise of incident handling. And we saw a marked difference in the way they went out of the classroom uh, and hands-on experience after this as a team. Now, not only at a domestic level, but we also tried this out at a global level under the uh, 
a global forum for cyber expertise, the GFCE, uh, we carried this out, uh, you know, in in uh, Addis Ababa uh, when it was held uh, last year, uh, and we tried this exercise with participants from across the globe. And what I was told is that this was the session which had the maximum number of uh, people participating in the room. It was actually overflowing. And people actually enjoyed this drill and exercise. And they went back pretty happy because the idea was to give it back to them, saying that this is the way you can try it out in your own economies and see how you can build this capacity uh, within your economies. And even those who were still figuring out whether they need to have a, a C cert or cert, et cetera, or those who didn't have a cert. And those who had as to how they can uh, expand on uh, making effective use of uh, these sort of so this is something which I thought is relevant even in this uh, phase, as you are saying, if you are looking at people who are uh, autistic, etc. Let me give you another example, because in the opening remarks, you mentioned about uh, doing something at a larger awareness perspective uh, for 1.3 billion people, etc. So we uh, embarked uh, on a awareness program for the citizens. Now, awareness you can do it in multiple ways of obviously through sending sms's sending uh, uh, pulling them towards your website etc all, all those sort of things are ongoing i'm not uh, denying that uh, and people are able to uh, get benefits but india has unique challenges multiple languages so then we had to look at things being developed in multiple languages so that people can understand while we saw all that then we realized that in certain parts of the country, even that does not work because people are not getting attracted towards uh, reading something, even if it is three, four lines. What is it that is going to attract them? So, for example, in one part of the country, we saw that they were very <coughs> excited, even in today's age and time, uh, which some people across some other parts of the world might probably laugh at. But uh, I think this is very critical because from a culture perspective, they're very fond of puppet shows. So we embarked upon a program on cybersecurity using puppet shows. And these were small snippets of two to three minutes, maximum five minutes, in which they were able to communicate clearly in the local language what is phishing what is phishing you know why you should not share this why passwords are required etc etc to raise that awareness and right from children who were in school as uh, db mentioned you know at third standard fourth standard till adults they all were so engrossed in this program mm -hmm. uh, because we have multiple festivals and these you know uh, stalls come up you do it across that, they were all glued to it. And then we put it on the websites. People were visiting this and they were again, uh, we had a lot of hits to this. So this was a great program. So I, what I'm saying is you need to, you know, mesh the culture aspects, the issues and challenges and see how you can innovate. And that is what helps. And this is the same way you can look at for the autistic children, what is it that will help them? Why, what is going to attract them? And then they will be starting to look at that. Oh, that, that, that's fantastic. I think both the points, uh, uh, just before we got on this call, uh, on this, on the stage, we talked about culture yesterday. That was one of the, one of the main themes that, uh, these are the common themes that we, we are all struggling and, and addressing the same challenges. Maybe all of us have the same you know, similar skills we are putting to use, but it's the cultural nuance that makes the difference. So I'm so glad Dr. Bell, you brought it up. You know, that that's excellent point. And I would like to reemphasize our our uh, um, kind of confidence in the global forum for cyber security uh, of cyber expertise, education and expertise. Uh, we are we are now a, a partner of GFCE. In fact, the next uh, session that Dr. Dubey and I are going to go uh, is going to be with Chris Painter, uh, who yeah. took up as the new chairman of, and is a great friend from a long time. Um, so really support the work that uh, they are doing, and 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 your. Um, kind of leveraging that work. So thank you so much. Yes, Excellent sir. points. Do give my regards to Chris. Of course, of course, sir.
Um, all right. Uh, so I think, you know, the, somebody has to beat that now. I mean, this is two very important uh, aspects. So I'll go to Burgess about you. We give it to you to uh, share your thoughts. I think you, you started this off. So let's finish it off. <laughs> um, some things that we can do. Clearly, uh, multiple things. Uh, one is what I mentioned, what we discussed on. But second thing, which is not what we can do, what we are doing, is we got a series of next programs where we identify the next OBC souls who are one level minus them, mm. get to a training, first through a IQ and an EQ uh, assessment which comes from you know, US or UK. You know, it's a, uh, they go through that, they get a self-assessment, then they undergo a three panel CISO interview uh, or, a check, or a check, and then out of 250, 235 or seven of them get selected and then they get mentored by 10 CISOs. So it's a great program. Uh, where, and some of them come back saying, wow, sir, we got a new job. You're mentoring us for one year. So I think doing a small, small part uh, of identifying talent who are ready to jump across but may not get the opportunity because their own companies, they will already have a CISO. But getting them a CISO next certified uh, badge or a recognition saying you are there. Or also a beautiful program from EC Council, which is certified CISO. Some of them actually go for that. It's the only service in the world which gives you a CISO or designate called Certified CISO. So some of these trainings, these handholding, this recognition gets the next in line for a CISO to actually be proud and say, yes, I'm ready to take on the world. Uh, I've got someone taking my back. So yeah. I think those programs help a lot. Excellent. I think that, that, that that's really I great. Think, uh, so Durga is a co-panelist with me and a co-mentor, and he also gives back a lot. Excellent. That also frees us a little bandwidth when we have more people taking the jobs that we're doing right now, right? So we can do more. So excellent point. Excellent point. Uh, thank you, uh, Burgess. Uh, Dr. Dubey, uh, your thoughts on, on closing, how uh, how would want to see this thing shaped up and uh, what can we do immediately? We already got a few lined up. I, I would rather take some cues from both Sanjay and Burgess. Uh, and I would uh, say my experience of uh, uh, handling the industry and also uh, handling the the attrition in my organizations. So, so what happens is uh, typically uh, if I go to a very good school, I'm being very honest to all of you and to the people who are listening. If I go to one of the best schools in this country and hire people, my training period for them remains the same, almost same. I train them for six, seven months to really work on security. They may be very good and they are good, definitely. Maybe one, two months less, but definitely there is uh, there are certain times uh, I may have to spend a lot of time in training. So and that sometimes doesn't happen because uh, uh, you don't have the time. What I'm trying to drive home is like the course which is designed for the schools in India need to be really validated by the industry. Uh, sometimes the, the what Sanjay was saying about incident management, uh, how many so-called IIT students who have specialization in cybersecurity, they really understand about incident management. We need people who really understand incident management, who really understand how to protect uh, data uh, exfiltration or how to manage uh, uh, malware uh, infections. These are the things that which, which the course curriculum has to be really seen by people in the industry. Uh, so that is that is very much required. We have we have done in a couple of schools. We have we have uh, engaged them from the beginning and uh, designed their course curriculum, which is uh, very much up to date to the industry. Uh, so that is where you find people who are absolutely ready made. They can they can really come and start working and start contributing things. That is uh, while I'm saying that the course which is designed by the ICT, they are very good. Their, their, their foundation is good, but you need to have course which is very practical and which really which is needed by CISOs like us uh, who, who needs people to, who, to be operational from the day one or day two, if not day zero. The second thing is what Sanjay was also saying about the hackathon. I think it's, a, it's an excellent way uh, of crowdsourcing and it solves a lot of purposes. One purpose it solves is it actually brings a, it creates a pipeline of uh, talents. If if to, tomorrow uh, this uh, sorting dodge a uh, hackathon, 
and uh, we very closely observe those hackathons and we see who all are the winners and we reach out to them for hiring and we know that they are really good guys uh, and this also solves uh, another problem of solving the problem like you have a problem which you can actually do a crowdsourcing through hackathon and you can solve those problems and i would suggest that cff should go do a hackathon once in a while in close coordination with the industry and it will it will help those people who will participate in the hackathon they will have a global uh, medal to, for them that they have won cff hackathon uh, and at the same time the it will solve the industry problem in 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 knowing the talents third thing is this awareness and skill are two different things uh, sometimes i think till the in an enterprise if everybody is uh, having cyber security skill it is a double edged sword for me uh, but awareness is definitely required uh, good that uh, we are doing it in the month of october where month of october is uh, is observed of the cyber security our awareness month uh, across the world and in 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 india uh, very few organization they may be doing but in reliance this is the seventh year we have been observing cyber security awareness month just i saw i mean i was just seeing my mobile you might have seen that our corporate communication has tweeted about uh, our cyber security awareness month with photograph and all and what you do is we don't do awareness only to the people we actually open it uh, through the people to the society is actually giving back to the society we we say them that you go and evangelize this to your friends to your families and we do sessions to the to to the family members of the our people and saying them how to securely use whatsapp how to securely use uh, facebook and all sort of things while we uh, we make sure while you give this awareness uh, we make sure that we don't give a message like it is insecure mm -hmm. we we always give a message that you should be cyber savvy at the same time secure user so that's what the message which we give uh, so i think i think uh, two things clearly comes to my mind one is hackathon has to be done uh, in coordinations so hackathon uh, is is a, is a, is a weapon to discover talent and the second thing which uh, comes to my mind is like engaging with the schools in the in this country from the beginning itself uh, in 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 fact in the in the in, in the designing of their course also that will really help uh, you to really build talent It may not be for you always but for the overall ecosystem absolutely no just the way that that uh, very profound very close to actually the work already underway i want to assure you that uh, all these points are actually being addressed uh, right now as we speak even in the summit today uh, a lot of this needs to be implemented very quickly i think that is execution is the key um, so uh, wrapping this up i that i would say training in in terms of the skill course curriculum and education we started the global commission for cyber security education back in 2018 and and now that we are seeing some of the results back we have uh, dr diana uh, burley joined our board this year and she is going to be responsible for for expanding that and making sure you know, we work with the icte work with the industry and make sure the curriculums stay current and, um, and hackathon and multi uh, you know the way to build a pipeline as well as solve problems that's definitely something that we promote others to do but i think cff probably needs to have a direct hand at it so considering your input will definitely take care of that and uh, awareness and skill i i think that that is uh, definitely a, a big way uh, to impact the society and uh, we certainly will apply our influence and our community's presence uh, over to this so so great points and i think all of these are, are excellent points that we need to line up in our road map to make sure that we work with you and we also take the valuable time that you have shared with us today and the ideas uh, to execution and um, so i speak that you know to with nag and i probably have to go make put this into action in partnership with uh, with you burgess with uh, dr dubey and dr ball now we have met uh, i think uh, we don't have an excuse anymore that we don't have access to uh, the government support to this so i think uh, collectively speaking this has been a great hour um i uh, that almost uh, you know uh, getting us to the finish line of having a plan i think without a plan uh, we can't really prom promise much so I, our promise is to make sure that next year when we meet 
we would have checked some of these that actually made some impact and worked with you, identified the right partners. Um, and, and the CFF model is enabling partners. So I think this is where the next journey is to make sure that we identify that uh, the organizations that are doing it and, and equip them uh, to do more. Uh, so thank you so much for giving us the time that you gave in the, the your, your busy evenings. I know how days are today and these days and then especially you know busy work hours meld into the day life so thank you again for this valuable time and and invaluable ideas that you gave us we will uh, look forward to carry it forward forward with your support uh, take care have a great day and evening and uh, we'll talk to you soon thank you sir thank you all thank you sir. Thank, thank you very you. much okay. Thanks so much. appreciate it